61 and a quarter inches. This week on the Bowser Journal, we're organizing our yard tools. So come with us and watch how we do this. We've been meaning to do this project for a long time. As you can see, our tools are just basically leaned up against the wall of our, of our barn. And it's just, it's messy and we, it never gets put back in the exact same spot and it just can be a pain in the neck. So we're gonna organize it. And the method that I'm gonna use is actually a method that I saw on April Wilkinson's channel. She's a female carpenter that has a lot of great ideas. So I'm mimicking one of hers. The only difference is she did hers inside of a, a shed with wood studs. I'm doing mine in a uh, metallic carport with metal studs. So I'm just going to use different screws. But we're going to organize it and then that way everything has a place and we'll be able to tell if something's missing and hopefully it'll make our barn look a little neater. One of the beautiful things about an 8 foot bed farm truck, you can carry 8 foot 2 by 4s without having to tie them down. The first step is to notch out in these corners two and a half inches each way so they'll fit around these studs and then we'll hold it in the place and then figure out where we need to do the notch for the middle. So the X represents the piece that will be cut out and where the stud will sit into place. So I cut in with the circular saw and it meets, but you notice this hasn't fallen off yet. That's because the circular saw, hence by its name, is circular. So the very top piece is here, so it's not connected on the bottom. I'll show you what I mean. See, look at the bottom, those two cuts don't meet. So now we're going to switch saws to a jigsaw. You could also do this with a hand saw. You could do this with a bunch of other things. Oops. Can't do it mail to mail. I'm getting ready to cut the notch on the other side of the two before. One critical thing to make sure you pay attention to. I want to make sure I know where the notch is on that side, so I put the notch on the same side on this side, so I don't end up with one notch on this side, on this side, and the other notch on the opposite end, so it's got to be the same. So the notch on that side is on this side, so I'll take measurement two of my measurements here, and we'll cut it out that way they line up. So what we did was we held this up, put the notches on the studs. I had my beautiful carpentry assistant go underneath with the, with the uh, pencil. She marked the two ends. We're gonna measure this out, two and a half inch, make our square, make our cuts, and then we'll test fit. We'll probably have to do some final adjustments, but this at least gives us a ballpark. So the cut for this middle piece is similar to the end. I'm gonna take my circular saw and we'll go in until the top of the blade touches that corner. But then, because this is not on an end, I'm gonna to have to take my jigsaw, kind of come in, go to corner, and then go along this corner, to, I mean this line, so I get to that corner, it'll fall off, and then turn it around and, and cut off this tiny little piece will be left over. You'll see that in just a second. You're probably wondering why my saw is smoking like that. Chuck needs to buy a new blade. like a glove.
the reason I'm sanding this is just to knock any sharp edges or, or splinters off of this. So that way, if somebody bumps up against it, like Barbie or the Grand Boys, they don't get splinters. I'm not so much worried about it looking pretty because it's going to be just a support system. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole, pre-drill a hole through this, so that way when I screw these in, they'll slide right through here and then they'll just bite into the metal stud. The key is you don't want the hole too big because if it's too big then that will have nothing to bite onto and you don't want it too small so the threads grab onto it so it's kind of a fine balance so that's perfect fit and then you see that's how much far it's going to go into the metal stud now let's drill the other side that's, that's support So the first step now, I mean not the first step, the next step is to go ahead and cut the hole where you want the handles to be. So you got two options. You can either just drill the hole and then lift it up and, and put it in, but I'm going to cut notches in front so you can just put it forward like that. I wouldn't. You wouldn't what? I wouldn't put the notches. Why? Because there's a car going to be sitting beside it, and if it were to get knocked off in a storm. Then the going to be way bigger then. If I was doing this in a shop, I'd probably go ahead and cut notches in front so you can just kind of set it in there. But because the, there's going to be a vehicle parked here, we don't want these things to be knocked off and then hit the vehicle, scratch the vehicle, break a window. So we're just going to drill the hole so you can just kind of set them in, pull them up, take them in. We finished our organization thing a couple weeks ago. I just haven't finished the video just because of lots of things going on on the ranch. We decided instead of just doing one section, we went ahead and did the entire wall all the way down. And we, and we mounted not only our tools, but also our kayaking and storage materials. So I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the system. Again, I got this from April Wilkinson. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'll put a tag below for her, her uh, YouTube channel. She's got a lot of great ideas. And it's pretty simple and what I like about it is, you know, there's holes drilled into it. You put the tools inside of it and then it kind of holds it in place. It won't fall over. It's organized. You can also easily tell when something's missing because there's a hole with no tool in it. Because right now I only drill the hole when the tools are actually there. We decided to go ahead and put in supports uh, vertically on each of the studs. That gives us more mounting spaces to put stuff and also provide support for the two before. I don't think there's going to be a whole bunch of weight on this, but it helps support that. And the system's already working because I see I've got a nail and there's nothing in this nail, so we have a tool missing. Now, I actually know where this tool is. It's in about 14 different pieces because Chuck ran over it with the lawnmower, so we got to replace that piece. Because Barbie couldn't find it and left it somewhere. <laughs> okay. Because of the odd shape of our pickaxe, I couldn't drill a hole, so I cut a notch. And Barbie was concerned that this would fall off and hit one of the vehicles, so I just took some Velcro from one of our kayak things, attach it to it, and we just lift it out, boom. Put it back in, put the Velcro in place, boom, it's secured. Also, we got rope, we got some more post hole digging things. I got room for more tools. We got our chairs hanging up here. We also have all of our kayak gear all organized and ready to go, and also. The, the life vests are hanging from above, the, the paddles are in holes here, so everything can, can dry nice and, and good. On this section up here, we have all of our straps, because if you have a ranch or a farm or a homestead or whatever, you're always hauling stuff. You need straps, tie-down straps. So we got plenty of them, and they're organized, so we just grab them and then run. Also keep some extras in the truck as well. And of course, fishing poles. Tell us in the comments below what organization things you have done on your homestead, because maybe we can use it here. Until then, live your own story.